Ever pondered on how to make your garden more sustainable and productive? Perhaps you've heard of regenerative agriculture, but what does it really mean? Regenerative agriculture, in essence, is a philosophy of farming and gardening. It's not just about growing crops or raising livestock, but about nurturing the very lifeblood of our planet, the soil. This approach goes beyond sustainability, aiming not just to maintain, but to restore and revitalize degraded soil biodiversity, improving its resilience and health. Imagine the soil as a bustling city teeming with life. It's a complex ecosystem where each organism plays a crucial role, from the smallest bacteria to the largest earthworm. When the soil is healthy, these organisms work in harmony, cycling nutrients, storing water and keeping each other in check. However, traditional farming practices like excessive tilling and monoculture can disrupt this balance, turning a once thriving city into a ghost town. Regenerative agriculture seeks to reverse this damage, to bring life back to the soil. It's about working with nature, not against it. By adopting a regenerative approach, gardeners and farmers can create a thriving and productive system that is resilient to pests, disease and climate change. Regenerative agriculture is also about diversity. A diverse garden is a healthy one. By growing a variety of plants, we can provide habitat for beneficial insects, birds and other wildlife. This diversity also translates into a more nutritious and flavorful harvest. After all, who wants to eat the same thing day in and day out? But regenerative agriculture isn't just about the soil and plants. It's a holistic approach that considers all aspects of the farming system, including the people and communities involved. It's about creating a system that is not only ecologically sustainable, but also socially and economically viable. Now that we have a basic understanding of regenerative agriculture, let's delve into the five key principles that guide this approach. Principle one, soil armor. But what does this mean? Well, in the simplest term, soil armor refers to a protective layer that covers the soil. Just as a knight dons armor for protection in battle, our soil needs a shield to protect it from the elements. This armor safeguards the soil from erosion and helps maintain moisture levels, two key factors in soil health. Picture the barren fields you may have seen in films or photos, soil left exposed to the harsh sun, wind and rain. This exposure can lead to soil erosion, a process where the topsoil, which is rich in nutrients, is blown or washed away. Soil erosion can lead to reduced fertility and can ultimately turn fertile lands into deserts. Quite a devastating picture, isn't it? On the other hand, soil armor helps to retain moisture in the soil. Picture a hot summer day. The soil on your garden is moist in the morning, but by afternoon it's all dried up. With a layer of soil armor, the moisture in the soil can be retained for longer periods, providing your plants with a steady supply of water, even on the hottest of days. So how do we create this armor? One method is through the use of mulch. Mulch can be made from a variety of materials such as straw, leaves or compost. It not only provides a protective layer for the soil, but also enriches it with nutrients as it decomposes. Another method is through the use of cover crops. These are plants that are grown not for harvest, but to cover the soil. They shield the soil from the elements and their roots hold it together, preventing erosion. When they die back, they add organic matter to the soil, improving its fertility. So, by simply keeping our soil covered, we're already taking a big step towards a more sustainable garden. Isn't it fascinating how a simple act of covering our soil can have such profound effects? It's a testament to the interconnectedness of nature and a reminder of our role as stewards of the earth. Moving on to principle number two, diversity. This principle champions the idea of mixing things up a bit. Just as a varied diet is beneficial for our health, a variety of plants, Crops and organisms can do wonders for the health of our garden's ecosystem. Having a diverse range of plants not only adds to the visual appeal of your garden, but also serves as a buffer against pests and diseases. Think about it. If you have only one type of crop and a pest that loves that particular plant invades your garden, you might end up losing all your plants. But if you have different types of plants, the pest might not be as destructive. So, how do we increase diversity in our gardens? Introduce a range of plant species with different flowering times, varying heights and multiple growth habits. 
This can create a layered, textured garden that is vibrant throughout the year. Remember, diversity isn't just good for nature, it's good for your garden too. Next, we have principle number three, continual live plant root. This principle is all about keeping your soil teeming with life all year round. You see, living plants and roots play a vital role in maintaining soil health and promoting nutrient cycling. They act as natural soil builders, aiding in the creation of organic matter and fostering a rich microbial life below the surface. Now you might be wondering what kinds of plants can be grown throughout the year. Well, it depends on your climate and season. For instance, during the colder months, cover crops like rye and clover can be grown. They not only keep the soil covered, but also enrich it with nutrients. In warmer months, perennials such as berry bushes or fruit trees can serve the same purpose while providing a delightful harvest. Keeping your soil alive throughout the year can be a game changer for your garden's productivity and sustainability. Now let's tackle principle four, livestock integration. When we talk about livestock integration, we're referring to the practice of incorporating animals into our farming or gardening systems. The role of animals extends far beyond simply providing us with food. They play a crucial part in maintaining soil health and promoting biodiversity. You see, animals such as chickens, cows, sheep, or even rabbits can help improve the fertility of the soil. Their manure, rich in organic matter and nutrients, acts as a natural fertilizer, replenishing the soil and promoting the growth of healthy plants. But it's not just about what comes out of the animals, it's also about what goes in. Livestock can be a valuable tool in managing plant growth and reducing waste. For example, chickens are exceptional at controlling pests and weeds. They'll happily scratch around your garden, gobbling up insects and seeds. And in the process, they'll aerate the soil, helping water and nutrients to penetrate more deeply. So how can you incorporate livestock into your own garden? Well, starting small is the key. Chickens are often a popular choice for beginners. They require relatively little space, are easy to care for, and offer the bonus of fresh eggs. Rabbits are another excellent option. They're quiet, clean, and their manure is a fantastic soil conditioner. Remember, it's essential to provide your animals with a good quality of life. Ensure they have ample space to roam, access to clean water, and a balanced diet. You'll find that happy, healthy animals contribute more effectively to your garden's health. But perhaps the most beautiful aspect of livestock integration is the way it promotes biodiversity. By introducing animals into your garden, you're creating a more complex, balanced ecosystem. Animals attract different types of insects and birds, which in turn attracts other wildlife, and so the cycle continues. Incorporating livestock into your garden isn't just about fresh eggs or meat. It's about creating a balanced, self-sustaining ecosystem. Finally, we reach principle five, minimizing soil disturbance. This principle is based on the idea that the less we interfere with the soil, the more we allow its natural processes to thrive, leading to healthier, more productive soil. But how exactly does one minimize soil disturbance? Well, it's simpler than you might think. Traditional gardening often involves tilling, a process that turns over the soil to remove weeds and prepare for planting. While this can provide short-term benefits over time, it disrupts the natural structure of the soil, damages the ecosystem living within it, and can lead to erosion and nutrient loss. Instead, we should aim to mimic nature's way of doing things. In the wilderness, nobody tills the soil, yet life thrives. We can replicate this in our own gardens by adopting techniques like no-till gardening. No-till gardening means just that, you don't till. You don't turn the soil over each season. But instead, layer organic materials like compost and mulch on top of the soil, allowing nature to do the work of breaking it down and incorporating it into the soil structure. This approach fosters a healthy soil ecosystem, teeming with beneficial microbes, insects and earthworms, all working in harmony to break down organic matter and recycle nutrients. It's like having millions of tiny gardeners working round the clock to improve your soil. Minimizing soil disturbance also helps to maintain soil structure and prevent erosion, keeping your soil where it should be, in your garden, nourishing your plants. 
And the best part? It's less work for you. No heavy tilling equipment, no back-breaking labor, just a simple layering of organic materials and letting nature do the rest. So whether you're a seasoned gardener or just starting out, consider minimizing soil disturbance in your garden. It's a small change that can make a big difference, not just for your garden, but for the planet as well. By simply leaving your soil undisturbed, you're allowing Mother Nature to do her job, leading to a healthier, more productive garden. So those were the five principles of regenerative agriculture. Each one brings its own unique benefits to the table. Soil armor protects and nourishes the earth beneath our feet, while diversity in our gardens and farms ensures a vibrant, healthy ecosystem teeming with life. The continuous presence of live plants and roots keeps the soil enriched throughout the year, and integrating livestock into the mix facilitates a natural cycle of nutrient replenishment. Lastly, minimizing soil disturbance allows the soil to maintain its integrity and structure, fostering a robust environment for plant growth. Each principle, though powerful on its own, creates a synergistic effect when combined, leading to a resilient, thriving garden. The beauty of regenerative agriculture is that it doesn't just benefit us as individuals, but it contributes to a larger goal of sustainable living and environmental conservation. Adopting regenerative agriculture practices in your garden is not just a win for you, but for the planet too. So why not give it a try?